everybody. Welcome to the Airsoft Ology Q&A show, the show that answers your questions, helps you in a pinch, and is consistently a little later than normal. I'm your host, Jonathan Higgs, and that's right. I, I want to say this. I want to start with this. I love the fact that you guys and gals really pick on me when I'm running behind. I, if you guys haven't noticed, this is the last week, the last time you'll see this background for I don't know how long. Um, I'm in the States. I've been here uh, doing some family stuff, and I will be heading back home to Taiwan. Uh, so you'll see the old familiar backdrop here shortly. I appreciate your patience with the fact that some of these episodes have been dropping a little late. In fact, Thursday last week. I don't know. Late. But I'm getting them done. It is super important we get these things done every single week. Uh, in fact, this week's a really good one. So stay, like, stay with this one. The first question, I'm going to lead with the title. This is a good one, uh, and this is one I think we're going to have a discussion on for a few weeks. So anyway, also, uh, if you want to support the show, I do have a web store. Link's in the corner. Uh, it's a web store full of morale patches, things like that you can pick up. They go uh, get you something really cool you can put on your gear or your patch wall and also go to support the channel. Uh, aside from that, this is your show. Remember your questions down in the comment section below, as well as your video recommendations for the last part here, which is the video recommendation of the week all go to build the show. Every single week, it comes from you guys and gals. So anyway, without any further ado, let's dive on into what you're really here for, and that is your questions in the Tipman Mail Call. Clayton Johnson writes, if you haven't heard, there have been all kinds of BB drama between some companies on Instagram about bio BBs and who is really bio and what their BBs are made out of. Now, you made a video a couple years ago talking about how bio BBs are not really bio. I think it would be worth it if you touched back on this topic with all the facts being thrown around. All right, so there are two companies out there and actually some of the commenters below dive a little deeper. So if you want to read more about this, I'm going to stay not mentioning these company names yet yet because I have a feeling after this week I want to reach out to these companies and get some more information because there is a lot of controversy and drama going on in the Instagram world and across social media talking about biodegradability and BBs. Now some fields like for example in Hawaii there's a requirement for biodegradable BBs when you go play. There's also Milsim events that require it. So this is a real topic. This is really neat and very important and I don't want to misspeak. Now, before we dive in, I want to be very clear about something. I am not picking on a single company here. I am not sponsored by anybody. In fact, if you guys realize, I never recommend a specific one BB brand. I, there are just too many brands out there. A lot of them are OEM'd by just a handful of companies. So you're just buying um, their special order, like how many polish levels, all the different things, the weights of from a few different manufacturers. So. I really want to dive in on the fact that I have always remained neutral in the BB game. So this is probably something I, it's worth talking about. That's why I, I feel like this. Normally I don't put a big disclaimer out, but I want to make sure you guys know like, hey, I'm not getting paid by anyone because uh, you know YouTube is so big into that. We are going to talk about the materials. I'm not going to mention the company names until I can have a chance to reach out to them. I want them to say their piece because there's some questions I think that need to be answered. So first off in the BB world, we have a few different materials. We have non-biodegradable BBs, the standard airsoft BBs that are made of a plastic material. So we're not gonna talk about the plastic BBs. We know about that, that's fine. Now there are a couple different technologies out there right now in the biodegradability. Now I did speak to the point saying uh, a couple years ago I did a video Hey, bio BBs aren't bio, they're compostable. Now, let me clarify. To be certified as compostable, you have to be able to break down in 180 days. 90% uh, of the material has to be broken down and gone in a compostable environment, meaning in a uh, the, the proper temperature, the proper environment to do a compost on that. So that is compostable, which is a subset, meaning within the big sphere of biodegradability. Now, biodegradability, just about everything on this planet is biodegradable, okay? Now, it can't be called biodegradable unless it breaks down, I think, in a certain amount of time. However, everything, given enough time, will biodegrade. Even plastics will. Now, we're talking hundreds, thousands of years, but they will get there, okay? The material will break down. So, we're talking about this. Biodegradability, Compostability, meaning you're applying heat and pressure, which in the airsoft industry isn't going to happen, right? It's going to be out there 
uh, sitting in a field somewhere or swept up and, and then maybe if it's an indoor field, they should sweep them up, put them in a, a bucket. But if the field requires fully biodegradable BBs or compostable BBs, which are labeled as biodegradable correctly because it is a subset, then maybe they can put it in a bin and, and send it off to a recycling center. Then we are talking about something else, which is uh, it's the OX, OX degradable, which is a different process. So we're going to talk first about the different BBs materials that are used out there. Uh, there are two majors, and then there's a third we're going to kind of scratch the surface on, and this is where the questions start to come up. And I, I would love to see this. I want to know more about number three, because I think there might be a third option for us, which is fantastic. Uh, we should explore it. First is something called PLA. Now, it is, it is actually a biosourced product, meaning it comes from something that's living. It's actually corn-based, plant-based, uh, and that's how the plastic material starts. Uh, it's used in a lot of applications. It's actually quite good for food use because it doesn't break down super fast. It is compostable. PLA is a compostable item, uh, plastic, that is uh, a subset of biodegradable. And it's really used mainly like with companies like Pepsi and Coke and all that in their plastic bottles. You'll find it almost everywhere. The good, good news about this is food safe. It's based on corn, a renewable resource. Uh, there are some downsides. You have to transport the corn and the, the raw materials in a refrigerated truck uh, to keep it in the right thing until it's fully, fully, fully processed. So there could be some environmental impact on the, the supply chain, but we're not going to get into that. We're just going to talk about materials, but it does come from something natural. So we have over here PLA. It is plant-based, corn-based, and that's what starts how the world starts, right, in that. And that's what most bio BBs out there today are made from PLA. Companies like BLS, who OEMs a very large portion of the world's BBs, um, their company is known for making PLA BBs. They do a great job, they've been out there forever. Most of the brands you are shooting today are probably OEM by BLS. Then there's a few other companies, but if you're gonna roll the dice on a wild guess, and again, I don't have access to who buys from whom, uh, you will probably be getting your BBs from BLS. If you're going to flip a coin, odds are that's the best bet if you're going to make uh, a wild guess of who's owing him the BBs. Now, there's another company, US-based company, that um, uses a different material, uh, the brand name, it's branding of OXO. Now, there's been some controversy around OXO and the term microplastics. Now, this is kind of a, a, a world a buzzword, and we're going to talk about how OXO breaks down. Uh, so this one U.S. company, I mean, there might be other ones too, but this one U.S. company has really gone in and backed OXO. OXO is a petroleum-based product, meaning it starts from oil. Actually, in this case, natural gas is the origin of OXO, or the OX plastics, OXO being the brand name of it. Now, uh, the biggest company there is Green Science, who's producing that. That's the company behind that material, and it is designed for rapid breakdown. Meaning when it hits the environment, unlike the other one that's compostable that will break down in 180 days, that's PLA, under that heat and pressure, outside in the environment, like in the dirt, it might take 10 years, right? And then it will fully, it will kind of break down 80, 90%. It's corn-based, all the binders go away and it kind of goes back in the earth. The other one, OXO, is plastic, just smaller bits, and it's bound, put together, with another material. And that material mimics biodegradability, meaning that when it hits the environment rapidly, we're talking within just a few months, it will break down to almost nothing visible. Now, they say, people are talking about in the studies, they leave these things called microplastics behind. So microscopic little bits of plastic that are in the dirt. Now, the argument there is, oh, it's, it is, you know, there's, there's different sides, different um, uh, studies. There's actually been, a, I think, a more recent study I want to dig in a little deeper on talking about uh, debunking some of the myths that were originally thought about OXO uh, and why it's bad with the microplastics, which again is kind of like an industry buzzword. It's not actually a real thing, like a real world word in the science world of things. It's one that the kind of the media and, and marketing and people have put around this product breaks it down to microplastics, these tiny, tiny, tiny little specks. Now those go into the soil because again, we're depositing this material all over airsoft fields, all over the world, and then they rapidly break down. I'm talking within months, visibly gone. Now there's this microplastics left. Now these tiny, tiny, tiny little specks, just like normal plastics, will degrade over time. Now that we're talking an extended amount of time, but 
this accelerates the process dramatically to just small little bits. So it doesn't have to break down a big sphere. Well, in this case, a 60 millimeter sphere. But now we're talking about just microscopic, like fractions and fractions and fractions and fractions of a millimeter. That is what OXO does. It is petroleum based. It actually is easier to transport. So there's less environmental impact concerns about that. You can do it by rail and things like that versus refrigerated trucks. So there's, there's a trade off. There's actually less environmental impact on moving the raw materials through the supply chain process because of the lack of refrigeration there. PLA you do because it's corn based. Now, OXO is not gonna be used typically in food packaging, especially like Coke bottles and things like that, because people are like, well, if it was so great, why isn't Pepsi using this? Well, OXO, because it breaks down so rapidly when it comes in contact with air and water and those kind of things, right? As soon as it hits all that, uh, the packaging material, for example, wrappers on cookies and things like that, would break down before the contents inside would expire. So it doesn't make sense. It actually breaks down too quickly to its little tiny subcomponents. That is what another company uses. Again, I'm gonna talk about company names once I get feedback from both of these. These sides, I, I, I'm very aware of PLA. Most companies are using PLA. The OX product, the OXO, is used by, I know for, for sure, because they've released it, one company. Then we have a third. There's a third company. They're also a US-based company. Now, this is these are the two that are beefing, right? Right here, I know this is long. Thank you for sticking with me. These are the two that are beefing. They have a third material. They say that theirs is biodegradable, which is awesome. So they're actually biodegradable. They also, on the packaging for a very long time, have been claiming that it's been certified by like the Washington, I have to get the exact words, certified by a government agency that is bio. So that's also very positive. So we have a third material that is actually available in the airsoft world that is biodegradable. The challenge is right now, the third company is really keeping that secret sauce to themselves. And okay, understandable, right? If you wanna keep the, the formula yourself. However, if there really is a third option, and this is where I wanna kinda of get on this discussion. And by the way, I do know both these companies personally. I do know um, owners and, and managers at both. Um, I'm not being paid by either <laughs> or to do anything. I, I just wanna be very clear about this. And I've, you know, I've worked with them, you know, in this industry as like, uh, you know, as a, another company that I will come in and out of in the past in different ways, right? But I'm not on anybody's payroll, okay? So don't worry about that. So this third company is, has another one they claim is their own special formula. It's not, so arguably it's probably not PLA and it's definitely not, uh, otherwise they would come out and say it was OX, uh, OX uh, biodegradable polymer or plastic in this case or OXO product, Green Science, which is the, the company that produces that. So there's a third. Now, here's where I'm gonna step in as an airsoft advocate. It's a long way to get here, but I wanted to give you guys and gals some groundwork. I think this is very important to us as airsofters. We're throwing plastic in the environment. I love this. I'm not like some crazy, you know, environmental off the, the you know, like just go crazy stuff, but I think we do have a responsibility to the planet we live on to do our best to leave the least amount of impact. So this third company has a formula. I would love them to show. To be biodegradable or compostable, you have to have an ISO study, an, I, an ISO lab to do a full on study. Now those are expensive, there's like 10K, right? To get that done. Or the uh, ASTM certified lab, which is a, lo a lot less money, a little lower on the end, but it'll at least give you the verification that it is. Now it'll show them break the makeup, but it's not gonna show you how to cook it. Like it'll like, it's like getting a recipe list and saying, okay, salsa is tomatoes, onions, cilantro, garlic, and lime, right? But if you've ever had salsa and chips, there's like a thousand different, and, and hot peppers too, there's like a thousand different ways to make it, right? I'm not gonna give you grandma's recipe with how many tomatoes and how much of an onion and how much lime juice to put in. I would love to see this from everyone. Because if there is a third option out there and it's really good, why are we not using it? Why is everyone not using it? So I'm actually, the only, time I'm, the only thing I'm going to call is I want to hear from everybody involved. I think it's important we have an open discussion as an airsoft community. I think it's great that we try to find good solutions to be less impactful to the environment while we go out and have fun, right? Because we're leaving things out in the world every time we go play. Every hit, every miss, 
it's out there. Even when you play indoor, we're creating piles of plastic. Ask any field owner, they sweep or blow these things up all the time with a leaf blower. They're constantly collecting those and disposing of them. We have a responsibility to do the best we can with the tools available to pick the best products or have the best options. So if company C over here, third option, is saying, hey, we got something. I want to see if we could explore that. If they really have something, hey, OEM, offer it for other companies to, to make. You can turn a profit on it. You should be like, unless you're allergic to money, that this should be a solution that should be available to a lot of companies to pick. And I, that's what I'm gonna be asking for here. I will be reaching out to all these companies. I wanna see all the information. If this company over here really does have something and they, they claim the biodegradability, I would love to see an independent laboratory certification. I know it's not cheap. I wanna see it from this company and anybody else who wants to step up um, and, and we can look at this. I know most of the companies are using uh, BLS. We, we are very familiar with PLA. We've seen the lab studies on that. So that's not a concern. Uh, the OXO, I'd like to see a, a confirmation from this other company that what they're using and saying like that. And this third one, I'd love to see what they're using too. Is it a variation of PLA? Is it something different? Is it something special? D does it break down in a different way? How do they get that certification? These are all fantastic questions because if we have a third option, we should be really exploring it as a standard or one of the standards. We need to pick the best tool in the toolbox. And I know this is a little preachy and I really appreciate you sticking around this long. It's important we do this as a community. And I think it's almost my responsibility to step in and say, hey, maybe we can all, let's quit beefing and let's start talking real data here, real data. And if they're good, heck, Maybe I can, we can get these other companies to buy from them, you know, and, and move away from a different material. This is good stuff, right? So that's what I want to encourage. All positive here. I know we all have brand favorites. You talk about BBs and boy, everybody's got their favorite, right? And that's great. It's all about how they order them, the polish, the QC, all those things. That can still be out there if we're using the right material. Then the companies can make their own special versions of it within those guidelines to have a great bio BB. So anyway, I'll be reaching out to these companies. I wanna know your thoughts. I, like I said, I'm not gonna mention the company names. They've already been mentioned down in the comments. You can feel free to do it, that's fine. I, I'm not gonna censor you or anything. Have at it. Keep the discussion civil in the comment section. So don't call, start calling names. I know we all get passionate when it's Pepsi versus Coke and we're like, oh, I love Pepsi, I love Coke. You know, it's the big battle, right? Your Mountain Dew and Mellow Yellow. Let's keep this thing civil, right? Let's keep this thing, uh, on topic with let's find the best material. Let's see what the best material is for what we're doing or materials. And maybe there's some benefits over here that we don't know about. And there's some negative, like PLA and OXO both are great products and they both have their positives and their, their negatives too. So let's look at all of them and see what's best. I'll be continuing this like discussion next week. So I'm really, really, really going to be paying close attention to the comment section below. And again, thanks for listening. I, I just think this is one that I really wanted to dive deeper into. This is part one of two. Um, and get into the, the, the meat and potatoes, if you want to call it, of the biodegradable BB. All right, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one actually comes from a question I didn't answer. It's like the, one of the top questions, but I didn't actually even answer it this week. It's more of a comment, actually, I think, from Random Guy Cab. Now, I, I know this guy personally. Um, uh, he's in the circle of the media people, but I just still look at channels like his and go, why are they... Why does the count, why does the subscriber count so low? Why, I just don't get it. Like his content is legitimately good. Now there's a lot of channels I'm like, hey, this is an up and coming channel. They're great. You definitely want to watch, mash the sub button. You're going to watch him grow. But random guy Kev stuff's like, it's there. But he's got like under 2000 subs right now. It's like right under, like a hair under. Incredible quality, quality content. This one, I'm going to really, air something with friends, high voltage. And actually it's Strikeforce South in New Jersey. I've been to that field. Have I? No, I haven't been to that field. I've been to one of them. I've been to another strike force. And uh, anyway, amazing gameplay. The commentary is great. He's great with his audio and camera. I just can't say enough about how good of a channel that random guy Kev is and the stuff he's putting out and is positive. Now this one even better is airsofting with friends. It's an event to go out and promote the community of airsoft and friend playing and things like that and, and get more people into the hobby. So it's kind of like a double whammy, the fact that he's a great channel and he's always positive about the industry and then steps up one more level with this. Uh, and it, 
kind of brings us in our software from a different, I've been mean, going international outside of the US and, and all over different parts of the globe. It's time to bring it a little bit back to the US. This is the Northeast that I feel like sometimes gets overlooked because you know, California and things like that really get a lot of the attention because of the density of airsoft players there. Uh, and there's a few other hot spots around the, the US. But I think this is one area that's it's amazing, it's great, and it just I feel like it needs a little more attention in this area. So actually, I think it's two for two now I've gone in the Northeast. I think it is, actually, now. So interesting. I'll have to move geographically somewhere else two weeks in a row. But anyway, if you guys have not mashed the sub button on Random Guys Kev's channel, you absolutely just need to do it. This is one of those channels I'm gonna tell you just to go, do you like airsoft? You like gameplay, you like cool stuff that's airsoft related, go to this channel, hit the sub button, then watch the videos. That's it. That's what I'm just gonna tell you to do that because usually I'm not like that emphatic, but it really, this guy puts out some good stuff. So anyway, if you guys haven't checked it out, as always, I have a link that would have popped up probably already up here in the corner talking about Random Guy Kev's channel, as well as one down in the description box below, as well as timestamps for all the questions if you wanna jump back and forth to see the different parts of the video so you don't have to scrub all the way through and guess where the questions start and end. Anyway. That'll be it. Remember, get your questions down below for next week. I will answer anything and everything. I wanna hear your commentary. Definitely hear your commentary on the biodegradable piece, whether it be compostable or, or different things like OX plastics. I wanna hear more about that. Feel free to have that discussion down there. I will be joining it for sure, and I will definitely be following up next week uh, with this one a little bit more as I start to get more information and peel some layers back. But yeah, definitely uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for mashing the sub button here on my channel too. And until next week, go out and play some airsoft. Have some fun, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.